For several decades now, academia has claimed to know the ages of our planet's oldest known civilizations. They have given us precise timelines that essentially make up what we know of as our historical paradigm. At the same time, independent researchers and scholars have repeatedly questioned and challenged these timelines as being inconsistent and in many cases flat out incorrect. Perhaps there is no better example of this inaccuracy than the age of the Indus Valley Civilization. For over a century, Western academics have preached to their students and anyone paying attention that the Indus Civilization was about 5,500 years old. But recently, it has been determined that they were off by at least 2,500 years. The first modern accounts of the ruins of the Indus civilization are those of Charles Mason. In 1829, Mason traveled through Punjab gathering useful intelligence for the East India Company. Mason's major archaeological discovery in the Punjab was Harappa, a metropolis of the Indus civilization that lay buried in the valley of Indus's tributary, the Ravi River. Mason made copious notes and illustrations of Harappa's rich historical artifacts many appearing half buried in plain view. After the British annexation of the Punjab in 1848 and 49, a large number of its bricks were carted away as track ballast for the rail lines being laid by the company. Some 100 miles of railway track between Moulton and Lahore laid in the mid-1850s was supported by Harappan bricks. Although the activity of archaeology on the subcontinent became more formally organized with the founding of the Archaeological Survey of India in 1861, archaeological work in Harappa remained stagnant. In 1904, the Ancient Monuments Preservation Act was passed and John Marshall was appointed to lead the ASI. Marshall subsequently directed ASI archaeologist Daya Ram Sani to excavate the site's two mounds between 1921 in 1922. Meanwhile, farther south, along the main stem of the Indus, the largely undisturbed site of Mohenjo-Daro had brought notice. Between 1911 to 1924, Marshall dispatched a succession of ASI officers to survey the site. Systematic excavations began in Mohenjo-Daro with K.N. Dykeshit between 1924 and 1925, continuing with those of H. Hargreaves between 1925 and 26, and Ernest J. McKay between 1927 and 1931. By 1931, much of Mohenjo-Daro had been excavated. After the partition of India in 1947, many excavated sites of the Indus Valley Civilization, including Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro, ended up on the Pakistan side. Unlike India, in which after 1947 the ASI attempted to Indianize archaeological work in keeping with the new nation's goals of national unity and historical continuity, in Pakistan the national imperative was the promotion of Islamic heritage, and consequently archaeological work on earlier sites was left to foreign archaeologists. After the partition, Mortimer Willer, the director of ASI from 1944, oversaw the establishment of archaeological institutions in Pakistan, later joining a UNESCO effort tasked to conserve the site at Mohenjo-Daro. Before the excavation of these Harappan cities in the 1920s, scholars thought that Indian civilization had begun in the Ganges Valley as Aryan immigrants from Persia and Central Asia populated the region around 1250 BCE. The discovery of ancient Harappan cities unsettled that conception and moved the timeline back another 2,000 years. And for nearly a century, academia posited with apparent certainty 
that the Indus Valley Civilization was about 5,500 years old. They separated it into three phases. The early Harappan phase from 3300 to 2600 BCE, the mature Harappan phase from 2600 to 1900 BCE, and the late Harappan phase from 1900 to 1300 BCE. All of that changed in 2016 when evidence was uncovered by the Indian Institute of Technology and the Archaeological Survey of India that the civilization was actually at least 8,000 years old. The findings come from a major excavated site at Birana, Haryana that shows preservation of all cultural levels of this ancient civilization from the pre-Harappan Hakra phase through the early mature Harappan to mature Harappan time. While the earlier phases were represented by pastoral and early village farming communities, the mature Harappan settlements were highly urbanized with several organized cities developed material and craft culture, having trans-Asiatic trading to regions as distant as Arabia and Mesopotamia. The late Harappan phase witnessed large-scale deurbanization, population decrease, abandonment of many established settlements, lack of basic amenities, interpersonal violence, and disappearance of the Harappan script. Birana was part of a high concentration of settlements along the now-dried-up Vedic River Valley, Saraswati. The team recovered perhaps the oldest pottery from the civilization. They used a technique called optically stimulated luminescence to date pottery shards of the early mature Harappan time to nearly 6,000 years ago, and the cultural levels of pre-Harappan Hakra phase as far back as 8,000 years. The excavation also yielded large quantities of animal remains like bones, teeth, horn cores of cow, goat, deer, and antelope which were put through carbon-14 analysis to decipher antiquity and the climatic conditions in which the civilization flourished. The team analyzed the oxygen isotope composition in the bone and tooth phosphates of the remains to unravel the climate pattern. The oxygen isotope in mammal bones and teeth preserved the signature of ancient meteoric water and in turn the intensity of monsoon rainfall. The study shows that the pre-Harappan humans started inhabiting this area along the Gagar and Hakra rivers in a climate that was favorable for human settlement and agriculture. The monsoon was much stronger between 9,000 years and 7,000 years ago and probably fed these rivers making them mightier with vast floodplains that the Birana and probably several of the Indian Indus Valley sites are much older than 5,700 years has been guessed by many archaeologists for quite some time. Our study pushes back the antiquity to as old as 8th millennium before present and will have major implications to the evolution of human settlements in the Indian subcontinent, says Professor Sarkar of the Department of Geology and Geophysics at the Indian Institute of Technology. The findings have been published in the journal Nature Scientific Report on May 25, 2016. Experts have previously suggested this successful and advanced civilization was gradually wiped out when the Indus River dried up as the result of climate change. There are many other theories, too including an Aryan invasion, catastrophic floods, changing sea levels, societal violence, and the spread of infectious diseases. But the team has come up with a new theory. Our study suggests that the climate was probably not the cause of her rapid decline, they wrote. While the ancient people relied upon heavy and regular monsoons between 9,000 and 7,000 years ago to water their crops, after this period, Evidence at Burana shows people continued to survive despite changing weather patterns. Increasing evidences suggest that these people shifted their crop patterns from the large grain cereals like wheat and barley during the early part of intensified monsoon to drought-resistant species of small millets and rice in the later part of declining monsoon and thereby changed their substance strategy. However, Changing the crops they grew and harvested resulted in the de-urbanization of cities and no need for large food storage facilities. Instead, the people swapped to personal storage spaces to look after their families. 
Because these later crops generally have much lower yield, the organized large storage system of mature Harappan period was abandoned, giving rise to smaller, more individual household-based crop processing and storage system, and possibly acted as a catalyst for the de-urbanization of the Harappan civilization, rather than an abrupt collapse. According to ancient Indian epics and esoteric doctrine, Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro were two of the seven rishi cities of the Rama Empire. The importance of the Indus Valley civilization cannot be overstated. While other civilizations were devoting huge amounts of time and resources to the rich, the supernatural, and the dead, Indus Valley inhabitants were taking a practical approach to supporting the common, secular, living people. Sure, they believed in an afterlife and employed a system of social divisions, but they also believed resources were more valuable in circulation among the living than on display or buried underground. Let's highlight some of the more intriguing aspects of this civilization. The most intriguing of all undeciphered scripts in the world, the Indus script is made up of partially pictographic signs and various human and animal motifs that include a puzzling unicorn. These have been found inscribed on miniature steatite seals, terracotta tablets, and occasionally on metal. Linguistic experts and scientists have been trying to decipher this challenging script for decades as it could hold the key to the secrets of this mysterious culture. Apparently, Mesopotamia's cuneiform system has some competition in the race for the world's first script. A well-planned street grid and an elaborate drainage system hint that the occupants of the ancient Indus civilization cities were skilled urban planners who gave importance to the management of water. Wells have also been found throughout the city, and nearly every house contains a clearly demarked bathing area and a covered drainage system. The city's prosperity and stature are evident in the artifacts like beads, jewelry, and pottery recovered from almost every house, as well as the baked brick city structures themselves. Not everyone was rich, but even the poor probably got enough to eat. The cities lack ostentatious buildings like palaces and temples, and there is no obvious central seat of government or evidence of a ruler. Also, the lack of many weapons shows that the Indus people had few enemies and that they preferred to live in peace. The most commonly found artifact in the Indus Valley civilization is jewelry. Both men and women adorn themselves with a large variety of ornaments produced from every conceivable material ranging from precious metals and gemstones to bone and baked clay. Excavated dyeing facilities indicate that cotton was probably dyed in a variety of colors. Use of cinnabar, vermilion, and collyrium as cosmetics was also known to them. The seals and weights recovered from the ruins of several Harappan cities suggest a system of tightly controlled trade. Trade through barter, not money, was very important for the Indus civilization and their main trading partner was Mesopotamia. There is evidence that people in Mesopotamian cities like Ur owned distinctively Harappan luxury goods such as beads, pottery, weapons, and tiny carved bones. A vital and thriving center of Indus Valley civilization, Lothal had the world's earliest known dockyard. Spanning an area 37 meters from east to west and nearly 22 meters from north to south, the dock connected the city to an ancient course of the Shabarmati River, which was the trade route between Harappan cities in Sindh and the Sharashtra Peninsula. In those days, the surrounding Kutch Desert of today was a part of the Arabian Sea. Evidence suggests that the people of Indus Valley civilization loved games and toys. Flat stones with engraved grid markings and playing pieces have been found, which shows that the Indus people may have played an early form of chess. 
Dice cubes with six sides and spots have also been found by archaeologists, which suggest that they may have invented the dice too. Mohenjo-daro translates to the Hill of the Dead or the Mound of the Dead in Sindhi. The Great Bath of Mohenjo-daro, a watertight pool perched on top of a mound of dirt, is enclosed within walls of baked bricks. The bathing pool suggests that Harappans valued cleanliness. There are even small changing rooms surrounding the Great Bath with an attached bath area in each room. Evidence of several granaries, massive buildings with solid brick foundations and sockets for wooden superstructures, have been found in excavations of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. All of the granaries were built close to the riverbank so that with the help of boats, grains could easily be transported. The great granary at Harappa also had a series of working platforms with circular bricks nearby that were probably used for threshing grain. Kali Bangan, which literally means black bangles, lies along the left bank of the dried up bed of the river Gagar in Rajasthan. Other than giving the evidence of the earliest plowed agricultural field ever revealed through an excavation, Kali Bangan also has several fire altars which suggest that the Harappans believed in the ritualistic worship of fire. Terracotta Steatite and metal figurines of girls in dancing poses show the presence of some dance form as well as a skilled craftsmanship. The most interesting and famous figurines recovered from Indus Valley excavations are the bronze dancing girl, the steatite bearded priest king, and the terracotta wheel cart. Thousands of engraved seals and amulets have been discovered from Harappan sites usually made of steatite, agate, chert, copper, and terracotta. A famous seal displays a figure seated in a posture reminiscent of the lotus position and surrounded by animals. It depicts a revered deity of the Indus culture, Pashupati Mahadev, who is considered to be the precursor to the Vedic god Shiva. It is widely accepted that the Harappan people worshipped a mother goddess, in addition to other fertility and phallic symbols. The recovery of a large number of mother goddess figurines from almost every excavated site suggests that mother goddess worship, or the fertility cult, was widespread and popular in the civilization. The evidence of the disposal of the dead at Harappa is quite unique and interesting. Excavations have yielded 57 burials of different types in which bodies were disposed of in brick-lined, rectangular, or oval pits cut into the ground along with the grave goods such as jewelry, seals, and pottery. In Rapar, a man was found buried with a dog. Excavations down to the streets of Mohenjo-daro revealed 44 scattered skeletons sprawled on the streets as if doom had come so suddenly they could not even get to their houses. All the skeletons were flattened to the ground, including a father, a mother, and a child who were found still holding hands. Lying in streets in contorted positions within layers of rubble and ash and debris, archaeologists have concluded that these people all died by violence, but what caused the violence still remains unexplained. As we can see, one of the planet's most intriguing ancient civilizations also has been determined to be one of the oldest discovered to date. The looming question is how many are left yet undiscovered? And it is also worth asking, as the archive does on a daily basis, how many of the currently known civilizations are incorrectly dated by academia? We hope you enjoyed this presentation on the Indus Valley Civilization, and if so, we encourage you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification setting to receive future episodes.